I want to see if um, maybe your experience it was the same as mine growing up like when I was a kid when it came to like relationships and stuff. We have this like little song that we sang to people um, that like liked each other. Like there was a couple. Uh, well, first of all, let me see. Is anybody in here a couple? Are there any couples in the room? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't raise your hand. You're in trouble. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, so we got Jacob in Vegas over here. All right, rose her hand. Uh, so let's just pick on them. So the song went like this, okay? And if you know it, you can join in with me. It would go like this. It would go, Jacob in Vegas. Yeah. Yep. All right, now... <laughs> What is it with, like, I was five years old when I learned this song, probably. Okay, so I'm five years old, and I'm singing about kissing in trees and babies in baby carriages. There's something that's a little disturbing about that, but apparently your experience was something similar to mine. Um, and so, yeah, we, we all learned about love pretty early on in life. You started singing songs like that, and you probably had your first crush pretty early. Mine was like five years old or younger, I don't know. Um, but we, we started with that. And when you're little, it's all pretty simple. It's all pretty uh, innocent and easy. I mean, it's songs like that. You know, love is basically when you're a kid, it's magic carpet rides, okay? And, uh, you know, sha la 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 kiss the girl, whatever, okay? Uh, that's like when you're a little kid and you're watching your movies and love is pretty simple and pretty easy. And then you start to get a little out of like elementary age into more your age and you realize this is getting a little bit complicated, okay? Like my first time to ask a girl to be my girlfriend I was in fourth grade, and uh, yeah, and so um, what I did was I, um, I wrote her a letter, right, on, on paper, and folded it up and gave it to her friend to give to her, right? And then her friend, she gave it back to her friend who gave it to me because I was too scared to talk to the girl even after she said yes, okay? Like, I was so nervous. Has anybody ever just gotten really awkward around someone that you found attractive? AJ has to raise his hand because I would totally call him out if he didn't. Some, y'all remember my story I told y'all about him? Okay, so we went to a singles conference for those of you that didn't, not a singles conference, it was a, it was a young adult thing and there was a bunch of singles there and they just finished worship, right? And, um, uh, and they said, okay, turn around and greet each other. And this girl turns around and, said, and, and goes, Hi, I'm Emily. And he goes, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I'm AJ. <laughs> and totally blew it, totally blew it, because she was cute and he couldn't handle it, all right? And we've all done stupid stuff. Because it starts to get complicated, right? It starts to get a little bit, like, confusing. Like, hey, what am I really supposed to do with all this? Because, like, you know, you got to figure out, do they like me? Do, you know, do I actually like them? Do I like them enough to, to date them? Or do I just kind of think they're cute? Or is this the kind of person I want to be with? You know, what are my standards? Do I have standards? Um, there's all those kind of thoughts. And then, you know, you get in a relationship and you're like, okay, now, how do you stay in a relationship? How do you not mess this up? Or then you're maybe you're like, how do you end a relationship? I mean, like, is there a right way to do this? Or how do you break up with them if you discovered you like their best friend? I mean, can you even do that? I mean, like, and there, suddenly it becomes super complicated. I'm not saying you should do that, okay? I'm just, sometimes these thoughts come, you right? And, and it becomes complicated. You know, I was, I got into high school, I went through, I got my first real girlfriend, right? And, um, and then had my first real breakup, right? And, and realized, okay, this can kind of be terrible. And I uh, kind of did that some. And then for the first time, started to deal with that whole uh, thing we'll talk about in a couple weeks about, okay, now how far is too far? Okay, I know how far is too far. Now how do I keep myself from going too far and going through that whole whole thing? And it just got complicated and it got messy. And so the, the reason we're going to spend the next few weeks talking about relationships and what is meant to be is because I think a lot of times we have no idea what is meant to be when it comes relationships. We're like, it's, um, for some of you, you've never even seen a good one, right? It's like everything I've seen has been bad. My parents broke up, this broke up, all this stuff, and you've seen only bad. And so you wonder, can there even be a good relationship? Or do all relationships be in bad? Or maybe you've already had, some of you had a, a few relationships already, and they were all disasters. And you're like, I guess that's my future of relationships, disaster, and they'll try again, disaster, okay? And maybe you wonder that, but we want to discover what is meant to be and what, what can be. And so, and I was thinking like, you know, it'd be great. We should, we should look 
Maybe we should look in the Bible and find an example of somebody that did relationships really good. So I started looking at people like, okay, what about Solomon? Solomon, he's like the wise guy, right? Um, then you read, Solomon had 700 wives, okay? Like, no, okay? That is not the good examples. Okay, we're not going to use Solomon as an example. Okay, I'm never going to take dating advice from him. All right, and then you're like, oh, okay, there's this other guy. Oh, Samson. Oh, wait, his wife got his eyes gouged out, okay? So like, if you're into a relationship and there's a part missing off of your body, it was not the right really. That's not good, okay? That's a bad situation, okay? His eyes got gouged out. So that wasn't good. So then I, I was reading and I found this story. And I think that some of you, especially the girls, are probably like this. And, and guys, maybe you, you can hear it. This is, this is about as good of a love story as it will get in the Bible. So there's this guy named Jacob and a girl named Rachel, okay? Now listen to what it says. It says, Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. By the way, if you want to know, this is Genesis 29, uh, verse uh, 17. So uh, it says, Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful, okay? Not just lovely in form, okay, but beautiful. And they're like, that's the same thing. But girls, I'll just give you an idea of how guys sometimes talk, because I've, I've heard guys at these conversations like, now she's hot, but she's pretty. Like, there's a difference, okay? That there's the hot ones and the pretty ones and the cute ones, and they're different. But this one is both hot and cute, all right? This is both, okay? So uh, she was lovely in form and beautiful. So what is about, next verse. Jacob was in love with Rachel, duh, okay, and said, so it goes to the dad, right? Her dad and says, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. So he's like, I will spend the next seven of my years serving you, working for you, if I can marry your daughter, which they had to like get permission from the dads back then, or they couldn't do it. And so it, the dad's like, Okay, we'll make that arrangement. We'll do that. Okay, so then it says, so Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. And some of you girls, you're dating a guy, and he gets mad if you have to wait five minutes in the car. He's like, oh, I want to tell you, you need to dump him and get you a Jacob. Just saying. Okay, hey, seven years, okay? Now, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Wow, okay? This is love. This is love. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. My time is completed. I want to lie with her. <laughs> he said that to her dad, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> now we know why you waited seven years. Okay, let's keep going. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. So the dad, they had a big feast for the wedding. Everything's going to plan. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah now, Leah was the ugly, I mean, the other one, okay? Like there was Rachel and there was, okay. And, and so gave Leah and gave her to Jacob and Jacob lay with her. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? What have you, why, have you done, why have you deceived me? So apparently, uh, after the, like the feast and all that, it would, he goes to his tent and it's so dark, okay, that the dad decides to send the old one instead and he doesn't notice, okay, because it's so dark, and he sleeps with the wrong one, and then he's pretty. So this was a beautiful love story, and even that got messed up. And if you want to know, he did marry Rachel also, which is even weirder, okay? So he married both, and um, yeah, again, not a good example, and not what we want to follow. In fact, every story pretty much you could find in here, there are a couple good ones, but most of them are like, this is what you don't want to do, okay? Um, but what is meant to be? What do we want to experience? What what could we see? Is it actually good? Can it be good? Is what's meant to be when it comes to relationship good thing? So I want to show you what I believe is meant to be. And the reason I say that is because it's what Jesus taught relationships were for. And uh, so Jesus said, gave us a vision of what relationships can be. And we're just going to take a look at that really quick. Oh, I forgot about that picture. I will tell you why that's on there. Okay. Um, so, um, I just wanted you to know, I'll go ahead and put it back. I dated successfully, okay? And how you know you dated successfully is you never have to date again, okay? Uh, because you got married, okay? And I don't know if I can convince the girls to listen to my, my advice for you tonight, but guys, if somebody this average can get somebody that pretty, I know something, okay? So just listen and it could turn out maybe good for you, okay? Um, <laughs> So we're going to look at something that, that Jesus taught us about how it's meant to be, and we'll just, we'll get into that. So here's Jesus talking, Mark 10, verse 6. Uh, but in the beginning, at the beginning of creation, and I just want to pause, relationships were something that God made from the beginning. 
They were his intention from when he created the world. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. So here's his plan, is that you'll have a man and you'll have a woman, and they will come together in marriage, and it says that they are united. In fact, they're not even two anymore. They're one. It's something that is absolutely incredible, and it is good. What is meant to be for you, if you want to be in a relationship, if you want to, to, to experience what God has for relationships, the, what's meant to be, what is in the future, is a relationship in marriage that where two people become one. It's amazing. And then he goes on and he says, therefore, what God has joined, this is not just a, a human thing. This is something God actually does inside of you, that God joins them together. And he says, let not or let man not separate. In other words, this is supposed to be something and can be something. What's meant to be is something that lasts for life. And for some of you, I know that's hard to imagine because you, you haven't seen it. No one in your family's made it. And that doesn't mean that's what it has to be for you. Because what is meant to be is that one man, one woman come together in a relationship, in marriage, and they are together for life. Now, if it's going to be a good love story, it has to be for life, right? I mean, because if it's like, well, they stayed together and they got broke up, then it wasn't a good love story. I mean, like, if you think about those, like, childhood love stories you watched, you heard, or saw, if they turned out, you found out, like, t like two years later that um, Ariel's prince beat her, right? Um, <laughs> and so they got a divorce, you'd be like, oh, that is not a good love story anymore, right? Or if you found out that Jasmine had an affair with Jeannie, okay? And you're like, what? This is not a good, because that's not what's meant to be, right? That would be messed up, right? And because what's meant to be is what they say. What do they say? And they lived happy. Now, uh, that is a little bit cheesy, like everything is happy, don't worry, the rest of my, that's not what I'm talking about. This is real life, but it is real love. And it is real connection for a lifetime. And it is something that uh, God created for us, that we're not, uh, you don't have to go through this thing that so many do as they go through a relationship and it's great and then heartbreak and it's over and then relationship and it's great and then heartbreak and it's over. That's the way most people experience relationships, but that's not God's design. Now I'm talking about marriage and you're going, uh, I am not even dating. I haven't even had a girlfriend, okay? Well, you're talking to me about marriage, okay? Uh, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in high school. I gotta go to college first. I gotta get a job first. Then we'll talk about marriage. I don't even wanna think about that. All, okay, I wanna know about kissing. That's really all I wanna know, okay? I wanna know about this thing, okay? I know what you're, you, you're there, but the reason I tell you this because then this is really important for you to understand. What you do now affects your later. How you live now will affect your later. Now, this is very obvious in some ways. Okay, I'll give it to you in a way that will be obvious to everyone. If I decided that starting tomorrow, the only thing I'm going to eat is fried chicken and ice cream and Dr. Pepper. I will eat nothing else. I will eat that three or four or five times a day as much as I want. And that is all I'm going to eat for now on. Okay, in five years when I come up here and I weigh 800 pounds and my stool's cracking and I'm like, I, I just don't understand why I'm so like miserably out of shape. And you'll be like, because you've been eating fried chicken and I, okay, it'd be like, duh. Okay, what you've been doing is affecting where you're at now. So here's what I want you to understand. I wanna have a great relationship someday. I hope I have a great marriage someday. What you do now is going to determine how good that is later. Who you become now is going to determine how good that relationship is later. If you handle relationships wrong now and you are just, you know, doing some of the things that people do, you're, you're you know, dating, breaking up, dating, breaking up, dating, breaking up, you're sleeping around with different people, you are doing things not how God has intended them for us, what will end up happening is you'll do what so many people do and you'll get married and then you'll divorce and then you'll do it again and then you'll do it again, and eventually be too old to do it again, and then that's the end, okay? And, and that's not what it's meant to be. What's meant to be. I, can I tell you what I want for me? I, I have a picture of what I want for me, okay? Um, this is my grandparents. They were married for 70 years um, before he passed away. And this was them at their favorite restaurant, Brahms, okay? And uh, they still, after 70 years, went on a date 
every week. They went out together and went on a date. And for 70 years, they loved each other. They cared for each other. They were, they had, and I could tell you, they didn't fight. It was, lo- it was, it was a good relationship. That's what I want for me. I want in 70 years to look back and, and go probably not Brahms, but I don't know where we'll go. Um, and, and, and go on our weekly day and sit there and think about all the things that have happened and, and all, all that's gone on and have had 70 years of love and joy and passion. I don't want to think about passion when you're 90, but okay. But all of that kind of stuff. Okay, that's what I want for me. And you know what? I believe God wants for you 70 years of joy and love and, and that. And how did we get there? Because most people never experience that. We have to learn how. We have to get there. It's not just something that happens naturally. We need to discover what God has for us and what is meant to be. So I, I cannot give you it all in one night. That's why we're doing a whole week. But I want to give you an idea or some, some thoughts that will get you started on the journey, okay? And we're going to uh, give you just one big idea pretty much tonight and then kind of tease it out a little bit. But here is if you want to start moving towards what's meant to be in God, here's, here's what we got to do. First, you have to become who you are meant to be, and trust God with who you are meant to be with. You've got to become who you are meant to be, and you trust God with who you're meant to be with. Now, most people just focus on the second part. I've got to find somebody to be with, okay? There's got to be somebody. I mean, there's somebody. I mean, there's a whole lot of fish in the sea, and I can't find one, right? And it's like, I got to find somebody to be with, and, and they think, you know, maybe if I swipe right enough times, I'll find the right one, and, and all the different things that people do, and I got to find somebody to be with, and I want you to know what is so much more important is that you become who you are meant to be If you start looking in the Bible about how to find the right person, there's not going to be a lot. There's a little bit, and we'll talk about that. But if you start looking for how to become who you're meant to be, it's going to be all through there. And who you are meant to be. If you do not become who you are meant to be, you will never have the relationship that you are supposed to have. I mean, what happens if you take an egg and a rotten egg and make an omelet? You have a nasty omelet, okay? <laughs> because there's a rotten egg in there. I don't know if you've ever smelled a rotten egg. That's gross. And you're like, are you calling me a rotten egg? Well, I'm saying that all of us have some stuff in us that we need to get out of because they will come with us into the relationships that we have. And so we've got we've to work on those things. I heard a story of a girl, and she was a little older than y'all. She told the story. And um, she was living kind of um, a party lifestyle, go in and just, you know, probably lots of swiping right, and just guy to guy to guy, and, and doing all that kind of stuff, and um, she went to, a, like, a church a small group, and there was this guy there, and to her, she was, like, the most amazing guy she had ever met, and she was so excited, and so he did, she didn't know for sure if he liked her, liked her yet or not, but she goes home, and she's telling her mom all that, he's so successful in this area, and he's doing this great thing, and he's so cute, and he loves God, and he's, like, doing all this stuff for God, and her mom looked at her and said, Honey, the problem is a guy like that isn't interested in a girl like you. And she said she just cried, not because her mom had said something harsh, but because she knew it was true, that she had become somebody that somebody like that was not interested in. And so we can become so focused on, can I find him, can I find him, and we forget to look at who we are and who, who we're becoming. So if we want to have great relationships, if you want to have a great relationship, the most important thing you can do at this point in your life is become the person who God wants you to be. If you become who God wants you to be, you can trust him to bring somebody else along. When I was y'all's age, I didn't even know Trace. When I was 16, I didn't even know she existed. When I was 20, I didn't know she existed. Um, and I'm actually kind of glad because um, if I would have met the person I was supposed to marry when I was 20, I would have destroyed the relationship because I had a lot of work on me that needed to be done. Um, the me that I was meant to be was not there yet. And I had to do some, some growing and some learning. And you can too. And so I want to help you become who you're meant to be. And we're not going to, as I said, do all that tonight. We're going to look at a, an idea of how that you can become who you're meant to be. And we're specifically talking about relationships this whole time. I mean, there's lots of things we could talk about as far as our life and becoming who we're meant to be, but we're gonna focus on relationships. So if you wanna become who you're meant to be, you need to become a great lover. Now, um, (laughs) yeah, I'm not talking about what some of you are thinking right now. You wanna be a great lover. You wanna be good at 
loving, okay? You wanna be, you wanna be good at loving. So um, now when I say love and, and loving and that, people think about a lot of different things. In fact, if I was to ask around, like, what do you think love is? What do you think love is? And we'd have a lot of different answers. People would say things like, love is passion, right? It's just, it's, oh, I just, mm, okay, it's passion, right? Y'all know, y'all, y'all felt that passion? You, you felt that, okay? That's, that's part of love. Love is I can't live without you baby, right? I can't live without you. I just, I can't, when we're apart, things are not right. I can't live without you. People would say, love is an incredible feeling. Like when I see them, my heart feels like it's going to explode and I got all these feelings and, and all that. Okay. And it just, love is, is that. And, and okay, love, this is a part of love. That is true. But the problem is, is for so many people, that's all love is. And if that's all love is, what was an incredible feeling later becomes incredible frustration, well, I can't believe he's doing that. I oh, see you wanted to listen to me and blah, 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 blah. It becomes frustration. And I can't live without you becomes, I cannot live with them another day. I am getting out of this, okay? And I can't live with them. And what was passion many, many of the times becomes pain. And some of you have even already experienced that. You had this, these, oh, this feelings and this passion and, and it ended up in so much pain. I mean, how is it? This is amazing to me that two people have so much of this that they, they, they spend their entire bank account buying a couple of these, right, these rings, and, and buying an expensive dress, and they invite all their friends to come look at them, tell each other, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I mean, they've got this to the max. And a couple of years later, I cannot live with them anymore. And they find a way to get out. How does that happen? They forgot to become who they're meant to be. And they didn't really understand what love was. So we're going to just quickly, because I got to go quick. Talk about love, as Jesus would tell us to love. He said this about love. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, he, he talked about here three different loves. He starts with love the Lord, love God with all. Love God with all. And I need you to understand if you will learn, if you will become someone who loves God with all that you are, you will have better relationships. In fact, let me just, just get you to think about this. If you're a believer, have you ever said to God or believed in your heart, I'm going to do whatever he wants me to do when it comes to relationships? I'm going to trust him with all of my heart, all of those feelings. I'm going to trust him with all of that stuff. I'm going to just do what he says to do. Have you chosen to love him that way? I tell you what, if you do, that's when you can begin to become the person who can have a great relationship. It is meant to be in communion with him. In fact, this is something that you might find, I find very interesting, okay? So you, you've heard there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's God, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three in one, right? Three in one. You have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're one. They have been one. They have been together for eternity. Before they even made the world, there was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in relationship with each other, always one. So then God made us, and he made man, and he made woman. But it's not when you're married, when you're in a relationship, a marriage relationship. It is not just man and woman. See, it's not just me and Tracy. It's me and Tracy and God. And together, we're one. He says what God has put together. And he, by the way, keeps it together. And our marriage is what it is, not because I am so smart and good looking. Okay, definitely not the second one. Okay, it's not that. It is because God is in the middle of our relationship. In fact, uh, I was thinking about this. When I was in high school, um, I had this girlfriend for a really long time. And so I bought her a ring. And... Um, well, before I tell you about the ring, have you ever seen one of those uh, things on the back of somebody's car? Looks like that. Have you seen that on the back of somebody's car? What does that stand for? Jesus. I, not a fish standing for Jesus. I could explain that to you if you're interested after the service. But for some reason, people started putting fishes on their bumper sticker that stood on their bumper, so it stood for Jesus. If you've never seen that before, uh, the people do that. Okay. Now, um, and they're always the guy that cuts you off. I don't know why that is. I'm like, take that Jesus sticker off. Okay. Um, so anyways, I tell you that because I bought my, my girlfriend this ring, right? And, okay, I'm not a great uh, drawer, okay? But I'm going I'm to do my best. Gonna, so the ring had a heart and then, please don't mess this up, okay. Had another heart overlapping 
that heart, okay? And she's like, she's like, oh, that is the cutest ring ever, okay? And all that. And I said, yeah, yeah, but I wanted you to notice something. You see, you've got, you've got my heart and you've got your heart. And she was a Christian, so this worked great. And I said, and we're held together by Jesus, okay? <laughs> and she was like, oh my gosh, that's just the cutest thing I've ever done. Okay, and she absolutely loved it. Now, as cheesy as it was, and I don't, I mean, whatever, okay. Um, that's just like, it, I was smooth, okay? All right. Um, <laughs> it's not a bad image, though, of what God really does in us, <laughs> is that they, they hold, he holds it together. He is the key. And you will never experience relationships the way God means, means for us to experience relationships without putting God in there. And so if I could give you one thing, if you don't hear anything else I say, if you want to have great relationships, pursue your relationship with God and your love for God, and that one thing will help you become who you're meant to be. I'm going to fly through the other two loves like that because we're going to spend a lot of time on them in the next couple weeks. Love others sacrificially. He said, love God, and he said, love your neighbor yourself. And then, so I'm just give you an I'm trying to give you all some visuals about, or some understanding about what it can be. So when Paul was talking to husbands, we're talking about what could be in the future, he said this, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That is what it looks like in marriage. Now, I know you're not married, and you guys, you probably should not be giving yourself up for the girl that you're dating, okay? In fact, you shouldn't until you're married. Now, once you're married, I'll be like, you give yourself up for her, okay? Because it's a sacrificial kind of love. But what can we do right now? Because I'm becoming who I'm meant to be. We got to learn to love sacrificially. And I'm not even really necessarily talking about in the dating relationship that you might get into. If you can learn, you're not going to like this, but it's true. If you can learn to love your mom sacrificially, guys, if you can learn to be patient with your mom when she's running late, if you can learn to be kind when, you know, she didn't listen to you, if you can learn to forgive your sister Okay, when your wife aggravates you someday or does something, that, guess what? It's going to be easier for you to do, to love sacrificially because you've been practicing it since you were a teenager, because you've been practicing it for years and learning how to love sacrificially. And, and we'll get more into that. So, and the last thing on here is this. He said, love yourself. Now, that's kind of interesting. You probably didn't even notice that before. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. And what we have to do, though, is learn to love ourselves correctly. Um, because we, a lot of us don't do that correctly. Uh, for some of you, it's this. You, you actually kind of can't stand yourself. And you look at yourself and you go, I'm ugly and nobody's going to like me. And I, I'm not good enough and I'm not smart enough and how could I ever have anything? And you have this view of yourself that is so low and that's... And that's, that's making it difficult for you to do love other people sacrificially. It's making it difficult for you to have good relationships because every time you get in a relationship, you either get super jealous because you're afraid they're going to leave you again because you're not good enough or um, <laughs> you won't even get in a relationship because you're afraid. <clears throat> I want you to understand something. You've got to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. So for those of you that look at yourself and can't stand what you see, what you need to remember is you were created by God and he loves you and he has a plan for you. And yeah, he may be changing you and growing you, but he's, he's yours and he made you and you need to see yourself that way. And there's a lot of you who maybe are the other extreme and that's probably more where I was and where when I was younger and, and, and that is we love ourselves a little too much. We're a little bit selfish in the way that we handle things and the way we handle relationships and we treat people, uh, you know, just however it makes us feel good and that's how so many people date. They get in a relationship and I, you know, oh yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh man, she's cute. Never mind. And then a guy, I love her, I love her and then I move on to the next one and, and I'll stay with you unless somebody cuter comes along. And then you know what happens? If you keep living that kind of a way, I stay with you until I find somebody cuter and I stay with you and then I found somebody prettier. Guess what happens? when you get married, it doesn't change. You stay with them for a while and you think, oh no, I'm married this time, it's for real. But you never change. You never let God do the work in your heart to become the person that you're meant to be and it just goes right on with you through the rest of your life and will destroy what God has for you. So, let me end with this. Um, because I know that it, some of, all of us, we, we got different things, okay? So some of you, you're struggling with that self-esteem thing. And you look at yourself, and this is going to represent some of the negative stuff in our life, okay? And you look at yourself, and you say, you know what? I, I'm no good. Nobody's going to care about me. Uh, I, you know, my mom told me I wasn't even that good. And my friends never really invite me anything. And I don't think any guys ever going to like me. And any girls ever going to like me. And you've got all that kind of stuff in you. Some of you, it's selfishness. And you, uh, you're always just trying to get stuff out of other people. And 
Um, you're the one that's like, you know, I'll stay with her until I find somebody prettier. I'll stay with them until I find somebody else. And, and it's just taking advantage of people. Some of you, it is uh, some stuff in you that you don't like and that you, you're trying to get out. Maybe you haven't really even tried to get it out. You know, it's like the guy or the girl who's looking at pornography on a regular basis and they're struggling with that kind of a lust and they go, oh, you know what? When I get married someday, I'll quit. I won't worry about it till then. I'll quit someday. And what they're doing is they're stacking up this lust in the heart and then they get married and guess what? For like two months, they quit. And then they start doing it again. And the story happens all over and over and over. And eventually a marriage is broken because they held on to lust and wouldn't get it out and wouldn't do the work. And uh, I mean, well, come on, we can keep going. Okay, I don't know what your issue. Maybe your issue is anger and you just, <laughs> you blow up on somebody like on a regular, like you've blown up on your mom, you've blown up on your siblings, you've blown up on your dad. It's just if somebody gets in your way, you eventually blow up on them. You even blew up on that friend that one time. And, and, so you, and you've got that anger stuff that's going on. And I don't know, okay, so you've got Come on, this is the truth. Every single one of us lives, looks like this at some point. And we look at ourselves and we're going, whew, I'm a mess, okay? And I, I got this stuff in me and, and it seems like, okay, you're right, I'm never gonna have a good relationship. And I mean, what would we expect? You take this into a relationship, there's gonna be some disasters. But I have some good news. You have a heavenly father that loves you. And if you will get into a relationship with him, he can do this. It says that he will create in you a clean heart. He can begin to wash those things out of you. Now, this is what so many of you have done. You, you've come and you started to worship God and you kind of did a little bit of Jesus. I got a little Jesus. No, no, that's not what he wants. He wants your all. He wants your everything. And if you will begin to just let him fill you up, he will begin to take out all that stuff that is inside of you. And eventually, he will work it out until there's nothing left. That last one was a little stubborn. Man, do you ever have something in you that's a little bit stubborn? Yeah, me too. Okay, I'm like, why won't this go away? Guess what? He can work it out. And this is what he does. He will fill you up with love and life. And when you finally, that person does walk along, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, there she is. Okay, when you see her and you see him, you know what? God will have created you to be the person that you're meant to be. Now, are we ever going to be perfect and we're just these perfect little clean things? No, okay. But you know what's great? Is I still have stuff that comes up, you know, in my life and things like that. I'm like, where's my wife just walks in and goes, uh, nope, okay. <laughs> and that kind of thing. But we're, we're, uh, we, we have those things that God's always working in, but I want to give you hope. You know what I, I, I should have said? Some of you are sitting there and you've got, you've got some regrets because you've already done some stuff in your past and you're looking at what you've done relationally. Like, I don't even know if this God thing will still work. It works. Okay? He can still clean that out and he can still make you whole and he can do what he wants to do. So this is what I want to ask you to do. Will you, will you commit yourself to following God when it comes to relationships and let him work out what's in you that he wants to get out so that you can be who you're meant to be? Now, as I talk about that, there may even be some of you here who say, well, that's awesome. I want that, but I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. You can begin a relationship with Jesus tonight. And then he will begin that process in you. Many of you, you know the Lord. And what you need to do is talk to him about one of those ping pong balls. that you're, You may have a whole stack of them in there and you say, I need to get that out of me. I feel so insecure about who I am. I need you to work on that in me and let him begin to do that and begin to pray and let him work on you. Can we just all close our eyes for a moment? Just tune everybody else out so we can look and see what God wants to do in our own hearts. I want to ask this. If you were watching me, hearing me talk about God doing this in your life and God loves you and Jesus wants a relationship with you and you say, I do not have a relationship with Jesus and I want to begin a relationship with him tonight. If you would say that, I want to begin a relationship with Jesus, would you just lift your hand so I can see it? I'm gonna pray with you and if, if that was you and you said, I gotta begin that relationship tonight, I wanna ask you to repeat this in your heart. Just say, Father, I love you. I wanna give my life to you. I believe your son died for me and rose for the dead. I wanna follow you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Why don't everybody look this way? If you just prayed that prayer, then you began a relationship with God tonight. And I do want to ask you to do one more thing. I want to ask you to go to the back and tell somebody. And it's just this simple. When we're all praying and there's going to be other people praying, you go to the back and to one of those people, you say this, I decided to follow Jesus. It's an important step in your faith. The prayer you just did in your heart, that was step one. Step two is you tell somebody, I decided to follow Jesus. That will take you to another place in your relationship with him. But if you need prayer for anything, maybe something we talked about stirred up something in you, let's let somebody pray with you and believe God's going to do new things. Father, we love you. We thank you that you care so much about us. We thank you for creating relationships. Lord, we ask that you would help us to experience the joy that you have in them. In Jesus' name, amen.